Now, another really effective choke with the hoodie with a similar looking grip is actually from the back, using the hoodie as a way to, almost like a bow and arrow or an Ezekiel is what we're looking for. This is still the choking tool, because when I'm on someone's back and their hoodie is available, bow and arrow chokes do work. It's not that difficult to get your hand in the material and choke, but because there's so much give in it, it kind of can stretch, and if he gets his fingers in here too, he's gonna be able to defend this choke pretty easily, or at least slow it down to the point that maybe I should try something else. Whereas the hoodie, it's much more difficult for him to block this choke, all right? So what I'm gonna be doing is controlling the hoodie. I have my seatbelt. I control the hoodie here, and I'm gonna pass it to my control arm, like this. See this? This grip here is not threatening in itself, but it's a pretty good secure grip. I have a, long, a reinforced grip underneath his arm here like this. If he were to be wriggling around, I can still use my seatbelt grip here. And then when I see the opportunity, I'm just gonna pass the grip to this hand here. Now this is a much more effective bow and arrow style choke rather than this, okay? Because this one I have to put my thumb in, we talked about the weaknesses of it, but with the hoodie itself, it's much more difficult for him to get his hands in to defend this because him grabbing this into the hoodie, which is probably what he's going to do, is gonna be pretty ineffective for him actually defending the choke, especially as I underhook the leg here and bring my body across. He could pull on that all day, but I just have such a strong grip, I'm gonna be able to finish this choke here like this. And if for any reason, you're grappling someone who has a very stretchy hoodie, which is a, a real thing. The give in the material can loosen chokes for sure. And you have to be able to adapt and improvise and then overcome, right? And for this one, there's a pretty easy way to do that. And what you do is you grab lower on the hoodie edge like this here. So I'm in, when I'm in the position and I secure my grip low like this rather than high, it leaves an opportunity for me to bring my hand behind the neck. See this? So my control arm is here. It's going behind the neck like this. So now there's no material for him to grip. If you tried to reach for the end of it, he's gonna to have to grab something other than the material itself. And the nice thing about these Ezekiel style finishes from the back on the hoodie is it's very secure as far as him escaping. No matter where he rolls, even if he clears both my, my legs here, it's gonna be very difficult for him to escape the position. Because even if he turns all the way to his knees on this side, it kind of turns into a clock choke scenario, which is still really tight. So this is a grip I'll be looking for today here to this low grip. Now you do not have to go under the arm if you don't want to. You can go over the arm and this will actually be a much tighter version of the, ch the hoodie choke, the hoodie strangle, whatever we're gonna call it. This one here. And it's, it's beneficial for you to be taking slack out of this material here. So when I bring my hand up like this, I put it immediately behind his head and then I start applying the choke. And I apply the choke by bringing my weight uh, my hips are around his hips right now. I'm gonna move my hips higher up on his back. So I'm almost like trying to escape from his, my own back control to get my legs higher up on his neck to start applying this choke from the back here. Now, I talked about hoodie strings, right? Using his hoodie strings is gonna be pretty ineffective. But what about your own? Now this is something I'm, I think could possibly work as a choking maneuver. This would be more of a garrote wire style choke. So if he's giving you problems here, I'm trying to do this and he's getting his hands in the way and I can't get the material to choke him with, maybe he's really focused on, on hoodie control. If he's really good at hood control, and he's controlling his own hood grip, I'm gonna start using my own material here. And I'm gonna make sure I have both strings because everyone hates when you only have uh, one long string and the other end gets caught up in the hoodie hood, it becomes useless. So make sure you have an equal length on both hoodie strings here. And I'm going to reach in front of his face and nose because he's doing the T-Rex defense here. So I'm gonna go in front of the face and nose with the back of my hand to lift his face up and pull him back. This will do two things. One, if he does nothing, I'll be able to lift his chin from his neck. Two, if he does anything other than hold on, he's gonna remove his hands from his neck, which is, they're both gonna allow me to use my own strings of my hoodie to choke him. So I got my two strings. I'm ready to use them like Jackie Chan. I'm using the environment here, passing this grip. Go ahead and go back to defense, double X defense here. Hand under the nose, lift. Take the strings, bring them across the neck. Now this is where people start making common mistakes when they're choking people with their own hoodie strings. And that common mistake is to only choke them with one hand. 
if I have this grip here, it's very slippery. It's hard to hold on to and it's hard to generate force here. So I want to make sure that I'm like kind of winding this up a little bit, giving yourself a little bit extra control here and then using my second hand to reinforce this. This is why it's going to kind of resemble a garrote wire here and there's no twisting involved. It's just a good old fashioned strangulation going straight back into their neck like this. And sometimes with this one, it can take minutes or even hours to actually put your opponent completely to sleep. And that's just the realism of the streets. On the streets, you don't know, you don't know how long you're going to be fighting out of that choke. You could, you could have the choke for an hour before help arrives. Just slowly strangling your opponent until he taps. Okay? You see this? Now this works primarily as a secondary attack. I'm not going to be reaching for my hoodie strings first thing. There are some hoodie string specialists out there that have been training street jiu-jitsu for, you know, a week or more like myself. And we've really gotten comfortable with the hoodie string attacks, but I'm not going to make it my primary thing. I'm always going to start with the hoodie grip. This is more effective overall. However, if he knows this and he's an experienced street grappler like Mihai is, he's going to be giving me problems blocking. And then it's like, okay, well, I don't want to waste my time. I'm going to use what I have available, hoodie strings, hand, front of the face. Now, it doesn't matter if, I, if he blocks or does not. The goal is just to get his hands away from his neck. If he commits to the neck, his face gets lifted, I still get the neck. If he commits to my hand, his neck is still exposed. So I'm just going to use that to feed the second grip, give it a little looping action if you can. If not, it's not the end of the world. Just hold on tight. Second hand keeps the thumb in. See, it passes it, keeps the thumb in, and then grabs. That's the detail. I'm not passing it and then trying to get my thumb in. The strings are too small. It's going to be difficult. I'd have to go all the way back to my own hoodie and then slide it in. That's inefficient. Move across, keep the thumb in, bring it back. Alternating grips. Alternating grips is what we want here and I'm pulling directly back. If your hands are too close together, this is not going to choke him. I want to choke him with the tight strings themselves. And I use that to strangle my opponent here. Just, you just hold, stay calm, doesn't require a lot of force, and eventually he's going to start getting uh, put to sleep. Is it time for rounds yet? <laughs> we'll be doing this soon. We have a few more of these here. Now, another thing you need to be looking for from the back, which the hoodie affords you, is the sleeve control. Now, in modern days, the geese themselves, on especially the sleeves of the geese, have become so thin, it can be difficult to get your hand inside to actually get effective Ezekiel chokes. But with a hoodie, with the new realm of street jiu-jitsu jiu hoodie rolls, this grip is very usable. It doesn't hurt my hand at all. It's very forgiving as far as my wrists. So we should take advantage of that. So when I'm looking for my hoodie chokes, my follow-up, string a choke here. As he's defending all these things, I should not neglect the opportunity to put my hands inside my own sleeve and then do the exact same movement that I did for the hoodie choke with the Ezekiel mix for this one. If I keep my hips too low on him, I'm not going to be able to get the force. So I want to be sliding up his body more so I'm away from him. That way I can start extending my arms. The arm extension is what gets the choke. It's not the arm squeeze. I don't want to stay close. I want to get this grip and I want to be moving him to this side where I can really use the material to get the choke. And what's happening here is the, the sleeve itself is stretching a little bit and that part is choking him as well. In addition to the hand going behind his neck, creating the full loop around his body, around his neck here. And for this one, in the hoodie, the Ezekiel grip works better if you keep your palm facing you. Because in the gi, if you do this, you're not going to have the leverage. He's going to be able to pop your fingers out. So in the gi, you have to turn your hand like this. But there's too much stretch in these hoodie grips. So for this one, you have to kind of use that to keep it tight. So I let my hand curl around his neck, and I just use this side of my hand as the choking position on this side here to finish these chokes. All right? So those are three street jiu-jitsu chokes from the back. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you want to make sure to never miss the latest jiu-jitsu technique uploads from this channel, hit the subscribe button and there's also a notification bell that you can ring to make sure that you get all the notifications for everything that we do here on the channel. And bonus round, there's a text 
number that you can text. Go ahead and just text the word Keenan to this number and you'll get the grappling handbook, which is a guide I'm putting together to teach you how to get the most out of your training. It'll include flow charts and technique illustrations and all sorts of little tips and tricks that'll help you get more out of your time on the mat. And it's information that you probably won't be able to get through just a YouTube video. It's a little more involved, I would say.